Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I'll help you design smarter, not harder. These kind of glowy aura silhouette designs have become pretty popular over the years, and I always see them on my Pinterest feed, and I thought I'd show you how to make something similar. So let's get to it. So we're starting off in Photoshop in my classic document size, that's 16 inches by 20 inches at 300 dpi which you can see here. So go ahead and make a document with these dimensions and with a black background. Pretty much the first thing you need for this is the main element, which is those silhouettes of figures in various positions. Those aren't really that easy to find. So here's how I went about making them. There's this app for your phone called Magic Poser that's pretty cool and lets you pose a figure pretty easily. Here's me using it to pose this figure. And I'm just trying to get it in that fetal pose pretty much. And then do a couple variations. I try to get sort of a falling pose as well. And then I use the preview mode to view it without obstructions and just screenshot it and then import it to my computer. So I spent a good 10 to 15 minutes coming up with some fun poses on that app. And now I've got them all here imported to my computer. Let's go ahead and drag these all into Photoshop and I'll pick out the ones that I like. So let me put those all in here. Let me just sort through these real quick and find ones that I like. I think this one's pretty cool. I'll drag that up here. This one's pretty interesting. This one's also pretty interesting. I like this lighting situation better though. So I'll drag that up there as well. Cool, so here are the three poses that I ended up on. Now we just want the figure. So we can go ahead and select subject this out using the magic wand tool and then just clicking select subject up here. Or if you're a masochist, you can go ahead and individually pen tool these out, but why would you? Before I do that, actually, since these were imported from my phone, they're pretty low quality and just the app in general yields some pretty low quality uh, images. So the first thing I'm gonna do is denoise these. And to do that, I'm gonna use my simpler denoise action from my JPEG decompressor pack, which is available on my website. So for all these, I'm just gonna click on the simpler denoise action here, and that's going to denoise it. I'll do the second one and the third one. This is also gonna help us get a nicer selection. So now for each of these, I'll just do the select subject function. So I'll go up here to select subject, looking good. Now I'll press the mask button here to mask that background out of this image. And I'll do the same for the other three poses here. So select subject, and then I'll mask that out. Same thing for the last pose, select subject, and I'll mask that out. Again, these are pretty low quality images. So while these select subject function gets us a pretty nice selection right off the bat, you probably want to go in and just refine these selections, whether that's with your brush tool or using the select and mask function within the layer mask panel over here. Okay, so I went ahead and refined the masks for all of these and made the selection a little bit better and smoother. So I've got all my poses ready to go. I'm going to hide all of them and put them in a group. We'll come back to that later. Now, first things first, I'm going to add a circle in here using the circle tool. So I'll go ahead and grab that in the shapes tool and just draw out a nice uh, perfectly symmetric circle holding shift. Cool. And now we've got this black circle in here. I'm going to turn that white just so I can see it better. Now we want to make this ellipse a small object. So we'll right click that, convert to small object. The next thing we'll do is turn the fill of this all the way down to zero. Now let's go into the layer styles and add a few inner shadows. We're pretty much going to make this look uh, spherical. These are actually the settings that I was playing with before. So you can go ahead and copy these. The first inner shadow, we just have it all white. Actually, all these inner shadows are all white. Distance on 28, choke on 39, size 150, and the angles at 29. Of course, this is all at your own discretion. So mess around with these values however you like. For the second inner shadow, same thing. The color is white. The opacity is a bit down. Now it's at 55 percent the distance is all the way up the choke is around 40 and the size is all the way up and for the final inner shadow the opacity is also around 50 percent the distance is nearly all the way up the choke is on zero and the size is almost all the way up so you can go ahead and copy these settings if you like or just play with them to get a similar result this part is of course all up to your discretion whatever you think looks best and you can go ahead and tweak it later on once we get all the elements in here. So we'll press OK on that. And now we can add our dudes back in here. Let's take the circle, bring it behind the poses group and choose any one of these poses that we want to add to this design. I think this one looks pretty cool. So I'm going to place that in the middle of the circle and then I'll just scale and rotate this so that it fits better within or around the circle. I think right here looks pretty cool. Now it's time to blend these two elements a little bit better. So let's go ahead and close this group and we'll start doing some adjustments on this. First thing I'll do is go all the way up top here and create a levels adjustment. We'll just leave that blank for now because we're going to come back to it later. Then let's create a hue and saturation adjustment layer and just bring the saturation all the way down here. Now it's time for some delicious grain. So let's create a new layer and use shift backspace to fill that with 50% gray. We'll press OK here and then use filter, camera raw filter to add some grain to this layer. Let's go to effects and then grain and crank that all the way up. We can play with the size and the roughness as well. I usually go for around here. I'll press OK on this. That's good to me. Let's set this layer to overlay. Now this is optional, but if you want some more variation in the grain, you could duplicate this layer and go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then set this to a low value like three or four. I'm gonna go with four here. And now I'll just turn the opacity down on both of these. So I'll go with 50 on the top layer and 80 or actually 
Let's go for 60, 70 on the bottom layer. We'll go with 60. Cool. So now we have our noise layers. I'm just going to name those real quick. And then on top of all this, we're going to add a gradient map. So let's go here and choose gradient map. And we just want to throw a blue in those midtones. So we'll open this up, click in the middle here and choose a nice soft blue. I'll go for something around here would work. I like that blue. Let's press OK. It's OK here. This grain is actually a little heavy. I'm going to turn it down just a notch. We'll go with maybe 40 here. 40. All right, cool. This step is entirely optional and you probably wouldn't want to do this if you're designing this for merchandise or whatever. But just for aesthetic purposes, I want to throw a, uh, a scan texture on top of here. So I'm just going to drag one in here and scale that up to size, then invert and set that to multiply. And that's just going to help me kind of dole out those whites, which is a look that I like. But of course, if you're going for merchandise, you don't want to add too much texture on this because the texture will come from the actual prints. Now we have all our adjustment layers here. Let's select all of them and put them in a group. I'll we'll name that adjustments. So we're ready to continue compositing. I'm going to go and open up this poses folder here and I want to make this guy a smart object. So I'll click on him and go convert to smart object and we want to add some style. So we'll go into the layer styles here and add some similar inner shadows like we did to the circle. So this first one here looks pretty cool. This is the same one we have on the circle, but of course we could tweak this to our liking. Maybe I don't want such a heavy effect or maybe I want to only affecting one side of his body um, so I can mess with the distance here and then turn the opacity down if I like. We can do the same thing for the rest of the inner shadows. So this one here kind of just makes his whole body white, which is a cool look, but maybe I'll turn the opacity down a little bit more. We'll press OK on this and that looks pretty good to me, but I still want sort of an outer glow on him. So we'll go down to the drop shadow here and I already have one set. So this one is color is white. The distance is pretty far out around 50 and the size is all the way up. But of course, I want to tweak this a little bit. This doesn't look too great with the graphic. So maybe I'll turn the size down a bit or the distance down, the opacity. And I also want to change this blend mode to linear dodge so that it interacts with the other glows of the circle. So that's looking pretty cool. And it looks like he's fading away right now. I'm going to turn the opacity down just a little bit so it's not too heavy of an effect. Let's spice this up some more and add some more blurs in here just to bring it all together. So on this, uh, this pose layer, I'm just going to go up to filter, blur, gauge and blur and blur him by a few pixels. We'll go with maybe four or six here. Let's go with four. So we'll blur him by four pixels and we can do the same on the circle here. So we'll click on that layer and go to filter, gauge and blur, blur that by a couple pixels. Cool. I also might want to make our figure darker here. So I'll click on him and command L to go to levels and just bring the midtones down a slight bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I might want a more interesting glow situation for the figure here. So what I could do is make a selection of him by holding down command and clicking on the layer thumbnail. And then I'll create a new layer and fill that selection with white using command backspace. I'll press command D to deselect and then I'll bring that layer underneath our figure layer. And now I just want to hit this with a radial glow. So I'll go up to filter, blur, radial blur, and I'm going to use about, I don't know, let's go with like 40 here and then make sure the blur method is on spin quality doesn't really matter i'm gonna go with good here and press ok now that looks pretty damn cool if i want i can layer mask this out to certain parts of the composition where i want that glow or that blur to be right now it's a little heavy so maybe i'll make a layer mask on this and using a soft brush paint out parts that i don't want like maybe around the feet here where it's a little heavy or around the head just kind of figuring out what looks best with this graphic now i'll also turn the opacity of this down a bit so it's not so heavy maybe we'll go with around 85 that's looking pretty good and i think having the figure as not a silhouette but obviously with the shades and values of a human figure is pretty cool but if you want more of a silhouette look all you have to do is go into the layer styles of the pose layer and add a color overlay set to white i liked it without the silhouette look but of course you can try this out with different poses and different kinds of glows um, but something you can also do is if you want sort of a silhouette look is you can have this color overlay on him and then duplicate the pose layer take that color overlay off and now actually i'll turn all the effects off on this and then i'll go into the layer mask here i'll create a layer mask turn that all black and i can just paint in areas where i want that detail back so maybe the back of him here or the legs or just places where i think that detail would fit nicely um, but not so much as to give away um, you know the whole the whole structure of his figure um, just kind of get a, a, a nice obscure look here okay now i really like the look of this so far but we can totally add stars lens flares in here or anything like that to make this a bit more interesting so i have a few pngs of some lens flares here that i've gathered from fuller mode's airbrush pack which is a great pack go pick that up i've also got the lens flare kit from studio triple a which has some great lens flares as well like 30 of them um, so definitely go pick that up as well love that guy i love jack 
Love Thriller. They make some great stuff. I'm gonna throw a couple of these in here and just see what I can make work. So this one is really, really cool. This is one from Fuller Mo's pack. And I can just place this wherever I want. And it's gonna be consistent with the look of the rest of the graphic because of our adjustments group up here. So I could place this on his head, which I think was a, is a really, really cool look. Or I could place it somewhere around his body or something. And I can experiment with any other lens flares and whatnot as well. So I've got this one, which is also from Fuller Mo's pack, which I really, really like. And I think fits well around here or pretty much anywhere on this graphic, really. It actually looks pretty damn cool around his head so that's where I'm placing it I think that's a nice uh it's a nice job here so that's pretty much the gist of it now you can rinse and repeat this process for as many poses as you want and maybe lay them out in some cool way on the t-shirt design or if you're using this for a post or anything really uh, you could do some maybe cool progression of the pose where uh, maybe he's falling more and more each time or something I'll show you an example in just a second here so I just quickly repeated that with a different pose and now I can pretty much lay them out how I want to Maybe I'll place one here, one down here, or I can make them merge like a bubble sorta, of, which is pretty cool. Um, I may need to make these smaller to make that composition work, but you get the idea. So here are our final results with some texture. I think that's pretty damn cool. Add some text in here and you've got a pretty fully fleshed out design. And that's a wrap. If you got any value from this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.